In this video, I'll provide just a brief introduction to uh, how and why we would uh, trim balance a piece of rotating equipment, but the main focus is just an introduction to using the trim bow program to accomplish a trim balance. So we're looking at here a high-speed uh, flexible coupling, a Copflex brand uh, coupling that's connecting a gas turbine to a centrifugal compressor and uh, we have a turbine on the left side with a hub, the flex pack area, the uh, coupling itself with some flanges and these are where the trim planes are located and then the flex pack and the hub on the compressor side. So um, why would we ever need to trim balance? Well there uh, may be some unacceptable level of imbalance in an assembly and in this case um, we don't have a balanced assembly of the turbine the coupling and the compressor. So the turbine was balanced individually, the compressor was balanced individually, and the coupling was balanced individually. And then they were put together for the first time uh, in the field and uh, any kind of a run out in any of these features is going to cause an eccentricity in the um, coupling. It'll run off of a true center of the uh, bearing uh, the journals and that will generate some amount of unbalance. So it is um, not uncommon that you will have an unbalance in this kind of a scenario. Um, there's all sorts of other rotating equipment uh, explanations for why we would uh, not have a perfect state of balance but this is a really common one. So to correct uh, high vibration on a unit um, in this configuration we would be uh, possibly adding trim weights at these trim planes. So let's take a look at a picture of these trim planes. So here's a photo through the access port on the top of a high-speed uh, coupling cover and we can see one of those two flanges with the flange bolts and then in between each flange bolt there is a threaded hole. Uh, so it depends on the size of the coupling what uh, uh, thread uh, diameter and pitch that is. In this case it's a 5 16 fine, a 5 16 32. So that's uh, basically why we would uh, be trim balancing and now let's get into using uh, trim bow to accomplish that work. So I'm going to open up a, a trim bow file just called test and you would download this software from my website stripchartopc.com free software so it's arranged in tabs. Uh, the first tab is just a summary where you can enter some information about the job. The next tab is where you would set up the trim planes and the vibration probes that you're trying to balance. So you can have multiple trim planes. Uh, to have uh, more than one you would click on this uh, new row and uh, you call it whatever you want. Uh, Multi-plane trim balances uh, get uh, complicated. <laughs> Uh, they're not just twice as hard, they're probably exponentially as hard. So in this example we'll just stick to a single plane trim balance. So let's say we're just working on one side of that coupling. Whole numbering, normal or reverse. So that means uh, are they um, increasing with rotation or decreasing in the direction of rotation? And normal would be increasing. So as the shaft uh, spins the whole numbers go from uh, lower number to higher number first hole. So that would be uh, whether it starts with a hole number zero or a hole number one typically. So normally it has a first hole number of one. How many holes are there in this uh, coupling? So you would need to know how many holes, uh, trim holes you have uh, on your shaft. And uh, oftentimes you just have to uh, expose the shaft, like open that cover up and count the holes the top dead center hole. So this is the hole that's facing top dead center where you're accessing the weights when the key phaser triggers. Uh, so you would rotate the shaft with a voltmeter on the key phaser output and uh, when the, key, the voltage spikes uh, look at the hole number and that would be your top dead center hole. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to use this if you don't want to. You can just uh, leave the default value of one in uh, and uh, the key phaser versus the hole numbering um, really only matters if you're trying to make good sense of your first uh, trim weight guess. If you don't care about making a good guess at your first trim weight, you can ignore this. Uh, now below we've got uh, by default four probes set up. Uh, bearing 5X and Y, uh, drive inboard horizontal, drive inboard vertical. So for this example I'm just going to use one probe 
and that's perfectly appropriate a lot of the time uh, you know if um, 5x and 5y are ho both high they're probably both high to about the same degree and so you can ignore the other and just use one of the probes and that makes things easier uh, I'm not going to talk about these features you typically leave those at the default then the last dialog on this tab is the weights setup so this is for um, if you have a fixed set of weights that you can't grind and you want to try to arrange these weights around the shaft um, to achieve the trim uh, balance vector your your, uh, your solution indicates so if we have a series of weights we can weigh them and uh, enter them here and we'll use these in the uh, trim solution um, the weight solver how many trim weights are we going to allow at one given time at an installation let's say three so this would allow the solver to find as many as three weight installations to uh, hit that uh, trim balance vector. That will become more obvious when we get into the trim weight screen. So now we've configured our, our planes of trim balance, our probes of trim balance, what weights we're going to use. Now let's get into the data. So in this data tab um, we have um, multiple points that you can select and that's shown in this data table. So by default we have two points selected because uh, you always need at least two points to do a trim balance. So the first point we've defined as our baseline and it's enabled. Our baseline recorded vibration data in this example is one mil at zero degrees. Well, let's put in something a little more realistic. So I'm going to type 2.5 at 100 degrees. So you have to put in that um, that uh, forward slash to separate the vibration amplitude and the phase angle. So that's our baseline as we found the machine. And uh, the trim weight that was installed for that baseline was no weights. So zero grams or whatever weight unit you want at uh, zero degrees. Nothing. So we then could type in a note and it's really helpful here to type in something about the, the speed and maybe oil temperature and anything else that's significant to the vibration uh, stabilized for 30 minutes whatever notes you want to put in that uh, are significant to how this vibration uh, is responding so then we would shut the machine down and uh, put a trial weight in and oftentimes we're just going to take a completely random guess so we'll put a trial weight in at some hole. Um, so how do we put a weight in? Well, you actually have to go to the uh, trim weight screen. So first we're going to select this point two and go to the trim weight screen. So it shows you that we're at selected point two. You can also change which point you're on through this control. And it shows you a graphic representation of that uh, trim plane that we uh, set up. So it has ten holes starting at number one and the whole numbers increase in the direction of rotation and so in this uh, default file it had a one gram weight and hole number one so this is our, our uh, weight vector here so if we wanted to try something different we can clear all the weights and let's say we just put in what weights did we have uh, let's do a 3.1 let's say we just uh, pulled the cover off and the whole number we saw was let's say hole number five so we just throw a 3.1 gram weight in hole number five and that then gives us a vibration trim weight vector of 3.1 grams at 144 degrees right in line with hole number five so that's our trial weight we have no idea what it's going to do so uh, now we go back to the data screen and we see we have that uh, un that trim weight vector in. Now we need to run the machine and figure out what kind of uh, vibration response we get. So I'll just uh, take a guess, just make something up. Let's say we got uh, about 1.8 mils at um, 190 degrees. So that's actually a pretty good change from our initial baseline vibration we like to see that we want to see uh, some significant change in this vibration vector with that weight addition uh, if you have a really small change let's say we ended up with 2.4 at 105 
uh, that's really not enough of a difference to really uh, judge the effect of that weight. So what we have to do then, put a bigger weight in until we can really affect that vibration. The risk is if you don't know where to put the weight, you could actually make it worse and oftentimes you will. Uh, so in this case the vibration is quite high, you could actually make the machine that vibrate so badly you couldn't get up to the same speed as before. So it can be a bit of a trial and error uh, determining appropriate weight for this uh, first trial shot. But let's say we got lucky, we brought it down and had a significant change with this weight. Still not very good, so what are we going to do? We are going to solve for the optimal weight based on this data. So uh, baseline to this trial weight and uh, solve for an optimal trial weight to get this value down closer to zero. We'll put some notes in here, uh, 3.1 gram in hole 5, and then we could uh, type what the speed is, try and get the same speed as before, same oil temperature, and so on. So now we do a solve. So the solution would be to put a 2.52 gram weight in hole number 180 and that would give you perfect vibration. With just a, a baseline and a response, it's always going to be able to solve for a perfect vibration. Is this really going to happen? <laughs> Probably not, but uh, it'll hopefully get close if we have a well-behaved uh, rotor system. So this is the weight we want to put in. So now we're going to add a new data set just by clicking on the add column and we're going to put in this uh, something close to this solution weight and we're going to get a response. So how do we accomplish this solution weight? Back to the trim weights. We're on to selected point three because we would uh, selected in the data before we uh, switch to this tab. And the red dot shows us the weight we want to accomplish. So we know we have um, in our setup, 2.1, 3.1, and 4 gram weights. Well, this is looking really convenient. Uh, our solution wants, well, actually, maybe not. 2.52 is what we want at 180, and we have those uh, three potential weights. So let's click this Solve Weights button, and it comes up with a list of solutions with a maximum of three weights. So the first solution is a 2.1 gram weight in hole number six which gives us an error of 16.5%. That's not great. But the next solution, a 4 gram at hole 4 and a 4 gram at hole 8, gives us 2.47 at 180, really close to our solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click this uh, row and it'll uh, prompt me, do you want to accept this solution? And I'll hit OK. And so now it's loaded a 4 gram weight and a 4 gram weight in holes 4 and 8. And that green uh, dot now falls so close to the red, uh, they're practically right on top of each other. So that's a really good solution uh, as far as solving for the weights. All right, now back to the data. And now we're going to run the machine again. And uh, we can type in. some uh, pertinent data again, run the machine, collect the data, and let's say we get uh, 0 0.3 at um, 40 degrees. So that would be, I think, acceptable, and we would uh, call it a day, save the file, and we're done. If you wanted to make it better, uh, let's say the result was 1 at um, 320, so this basically tells us that if we had this result, that it didn't agree, it didn't follow what the um, first two data points said should happen. If this happened, we've got some head scratching to do. Why didn't it behave as predicted? Uh, so it basically contradicts the results of the first weight install. Possible explanations for this would be that uh, maybe you didn't have enough of a change to uh, get a good signal to noise ratio. Uh, but in this case, we did. So what would be another explanation? Maybe the rotor is just uh, erratic. There's something loose in the rotor or some other problem that's creating poor repeatability. So we could solve again. And what it's going to do is average these results and make a solution based on the average of, of the, um, this data. And so 
this would be possibly our next step. <laughs> uh, hopefully you don't get into that scenario. Hopefully the, the um, vibration behaved as expected. So if we turn this point off, solve again, and then we got some nice level of vibration like uh, we said before, and that's hopefully how it's going to work. So that's a basic introduction to um, using this program. Um, I guess I'll just follow up with a little more information on using this uh, trim weight selection screen. So let's go back to uh, clear uh, weights, no weights installed, and again we're trying to get to this 2.52 at 180 vector. So you can just uh, add weights manually yourself and uh, try and home in on it. Um, let's say try a weight in hole number five. Let's go with uh, three and a half grams in hole five, and then three and a half grams in hole seven. Uh, that put us way off the plot. Uh, so let's. So that was too much. So we're way out here. So you can do a trial and error and solve yourself uh, to home in on, on a given uh, weight vector. Another trick is to uh, grind weights. So let's say you know you want to put your weights in holes 5 and 7. So we've thrown some weights in there. If we hit this grind weights button, what it's going to do is adjust these these weight values until it exactly matches the uh, desired uh, unbalanced or de desired trim vector. So we'll click grind weights and that's exactly the values we would want in each of those holes to perfectly get to our solution weight. So there's another trick. If that's too small then we need more of a split you know to move them further apart. So let's put uh, just put one in hole number four and one in hole number eight. Hit grind weight again. And 4.08 and 4.06 in holes four and eight. So with a wider spread on those weight placements, it takes more weight to get to that solution weight. All right. So um, you can also switch the view. So if you're looking at the trim plane from the other direction, you can switch the view so it uh, is a little clearer to you as you're uh, visualizing looking at the plane. And uh, just one last thing to say about this program. Um, the learning curve is a little bit steep. It isn't totally intuitive how this all works, but hopefully with this uh, video you've got a little more insight and you can use the uh, help uh, to read about all the features of this program. So it's a fairly comprehensive help file. Thanks very much.